What's up YouTube? I hope you guys have been doing well. I hope the videos in my channel have been helping you guys to catch more fish, go out there outdoors and enjoy the sport of fishing. Uh, today I'm bringing you guys my first ever didactic video, okay? In other words, a tutorial. <laughs> As you guys may or may not be aware of, I I've announced a couple weeks ago on one of my uh, live streams that I would be making a new playlist in my Extreme Philly Fishing YouTube channel called How To. And in this playlist, pretty much, I'm going to post one video every week, <coughs> which is going to be a tutorial video. Okay, so a video on how to do something related to multi species fishing. For example, how to properly handle fish, uh, how to use different types of rigs, how to find fish in certain places, how to fish for certain species of fish, among other things, okay? So today is my first video ever. I am going to be teaching you guys how to tie a slip sinker setup, meaning a slip sinker rig, and how to use it properly, okay? But before I do that, before I do that, okay? Every week, as I mentioned previously, every week I'm going to be bringing a new video and I want you guys to let me know what you guys want to learn or what you feel like learning, okay? So if you have any ideas for future how-to videos, okay? If there's anything that interests you and you want to learn more about it, please leave your comment on the comment section below with that idea, okay? And every week, I'm, I'm gonna look through the comments and I'm going to select the ones, you know, that, uh, that people want to learn the most, okay? And I'm gonna make a video about that on the upcoming week, all right? All right, let's talk a little bit about now the Sleep Sinker setup now, which is one of my favorite rigs for steel fishing, okay? Uh, through this video, I'm going to explain how to tie them. So you guys, by the end of this video, you guys will be professional when it comes to tying a slip sinker setup. I will talk a little bit about how to properly use them. A lot of people don't know the difference between a slip sinker setup and other rigs, you know? So what makes this slip sinker setup so unique? Okay? I will talk about the pros and the cons of using a slip sinker setup, as you know, Anglers are supposed to use different rigs in different situations and this lip sinker setup is only good for certain situations, okay? Uh, you guys will see, I'll talk about a lot of things. Let's do this. Alright, before I start doing this lip sinker setups here and explain the pros and the cons and the science behind it, the physics behind it, right? I just want to let you guys know that I tried, I really tried to make this video as short as possible, okay? However, you guys need to understand that there are no shortcuts when it comes to learning. So since this is a didactic video, since this is a tutorial, you know, as much as I try to make it short and not too boring, alright, it is what it is. This is the size of the video, okay? This many amount of minutes. However, I can guarantee you that after you watch this video, you are going to be more proficient when it comes to this lip sinker setup. You are, you, you are going to know how to tie it, how to use it, in what situation, etc. So, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that after you watch this video, you know, you should feel really rewarding with the extra knowledge that comes with it, okay? Unless you already know about it. You know all the stuff in the video right if you know about all the stuff already then I mean there's not much point in watching it <laughs> you know second thing that I wanted to talk about this is a tutorial video this is a didactic video right so there is no fishing in this video okay all the videos that are going to be under my how to playlist will have will not have fishing involved in them, like not going to the river and be like fish on, alright? So for this reason, I will always be leaving videos in the info button above, okay? Which are going to be applications 
of the theories that I explain in these videos. What I'm trying to tell you is, I'm leaving the videos in the info box button, those videos are the videos where I actually use the things that I'm talking about here in this video. So for example, in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to tie a slip sinker setup, how to use it, what are the pros and the cons. Those videos in the info button will be the videos where I am already down the river, I am already fishing and I am using a slip sinker setup and I am catching fish using a slip sinker setup, okay? So I highly recommend you guys to watch those videos, okay? Once you are done with this one, so you can actually see, you can see the application of the theories that I'm talking about here. Okay, folks? All right, now let's get started with the slip sinker setup. All right, folks, before I even do the slip sinker setup, right? I'm going to tie it in front of you. This is going to be your, your view to the setup. Let me go through our equipment, our repertoire, right? So pretty much what exactly is needed to tie a slip sinker setup, okay? So let me show you all the stuff that I got here first, okay? So for today, I am going to tie two slip sinker setups, two slip sinker rigs, okay? I'm going to tie one that I would use for very light multi-species fishing and I'm going to tie a second one that I would use for like heavy flathead fishing, okay? Because this slip sinker setup is very traditional, it is very used in the fishing community and it can be used in different types of situations, okay? So let me show you guys what I got. I got here for the first set up I got my favorite fishing line here the one that I always announce on my fishing on my fishing videos the Berkeley Vanish Invisi uh, the invisible you know the fluorocarbon okay it's 12 pounds this is the one that I use for my noodle rod and you know on my Shimano Symmetry 4000 FL okay so this is the first line for the first setup the one for multi species the second setup the one that is a little bit heavier I have an ultra cast Invisi braid. It is the spider wire, okay? So this is a braided line that apparently fish are not supposed to see inside the water. That's why it's called Invisi braid. And this one is 30 pounds, okay? 30 pounds test line. So this is the this is the braided line that I used to use before the 50 pounds power pro, okay? We're going to use this two here to tie our two different slip sinker setups when it comes to a swivel slip sinker setups need a swivel okay now you can use your regular swivel barrel swivel okay I like to use what is called a snap swivel especially the ones made by Eagle Claw okay uh, I don't remember what size this is but you guys can check in your local stores so this is a snap swivel okay a little closer view for you guys and what is good about the snap swivel is that you know instead of tying your line with your hook you can just open it up right here right and you can pretty much put your snail hook inside here you guys will see it when I actually make the rigs okay so there you go first component line second component swivel okay then the third thing that you guys will need is a sinker right it's called a slip sinker rig for a reason <laughs> it's because the sinker can actually slip through the line it is not a fixed sinker that when you pull the line the sinker goes together with the line no this is a slip sinker setup when you pull the line the sinker actually stays in place okay this is something important that I will talk more about later so for the setup I got here egg sinkers okay these are one ounce egg sinkers just to make it a little bit more interesting I've also got one ounce pyramid sinkers okay that I will be using and to make things even more interesting I've got a two ounces river sinker okay and this is to show you guys later that depending on what, on what sinker do you use, your slip sinker setup is going to have different effects, okay? So choosing the type of your sinker 
carefully is very very important for a sleep sinker setup okay you guys will understand that later and finally the last thing that you need is a snailed hook well I say snailed hook because I prefer snailed hooks that's why I use the snap swivels if you want to tie your own line right your own leader line with your own hook that is fine as well I prefer to use snailed hooks and for the light setup I have here the Eagle Claw size 10 is nailed hooks you guys can see here very small hook com compared to my finger these are actually the, the hook sizes that I use for very light multi-species fishing okay so even smaller species of fish can get the hook and the second thing is the second type of hook that I have is my own version of snailed octopus hooks okay and to make this snail octopus hooks here what I use is usually the coated wire for bluefish so I buy these bluefish hooks you see very long hooks here kind of a big Aberdeen hooks but not quite which the with the uh, with this the the coated wire right but I don't like these hooks so I take the coated wire off of this hook and I use it with a gamakatsu gamakatsu circle hook okay octopus either a size see this is a size AO or a 7O okay alright so these are all the components that we will need for today to make our sleep sinker setups okay I'll leave all of this here now let me build the sleep sinker setup so you guys have an idea you know how to do it okay if you have never done it before all right let's get started okay first things first I'm going to get a do the light setup first so let me open the line here this is as mentioned previously 12 pounds Berkeley vanish fluorocarbon line okay I'm gonna get a just a short amount of line okay you guys can see it short amount of line because you know this is just for our own little uh, experiment here right we are not fishing with it so we don't really need a, a big piece of line okay a small you know you see there you go that's the distance short short piece of line I like to tie my slip sinker setup using this uh, using this notch called the reinforced clinch notch you don't necessarily need to use the reinforced clinch knot okay you can actually use like a palomar knot that works just the same but I would recommend either the reinforced clinch knot or the palomar okay when it comes to the fishing books these two knots are the knots that they call 90 percent efficiency okay meaning that these two knots are like the most resistant knots okay so I'm gonna tie a reinforced clinch knot I'm not gonna teach you how to do the notch today okay so, so you just watch it I can do a video later on how to do different types of knots if you want here you go get yeah, now here's the deal right I'm doing just a short version of this of this uh, rig this lip sinker setup right but don't forget if we were fishing this side of the line would be the line where I'm doing the rig excuse my phone and this other side would be the line that connects to your fishing rod okay so before tying anything else on this line you would have to put the sinker on okay see I'm putting the sinker on after putting the sinker on the line then you tie the swivel on okay and here I got my snap swivel okay there we go I'm gonna do a reinforced clinch knot as I've mentioned before so let me do it here real quick okay can be a little bit tricky with the short line you know okay make sure the knot is very close close by all right there we go okay here's my reinforced clinch notch with my slip sinker oh wait you see very smooth the sinker slips on the line okay <clears throat> this additional little piece of line we cut it off there we go finally we get a snail hook as I've mentioned previously I'm using a size 10 is hook right here okay let's try to make this as smooth as possible 
Okay, come, come down here. Come down here. All right, I got you. Okay, so I got here a size 10 hook. Very, very small, okay? You guys can compare it to my finger. Very, very small hook, all right? I usually use this for multi-species fishing. We get the snap swivel, open it up, put it in. There you go. You got yourselves here, a slip sinker set up, okay? There you go, see? Hook. I will show you the components again. Line that is connected to your fishing rod. Right when you cast it outside and it's all the way down in the water, this is how it stays. Then you have the sinker, you have the snap swivel, see, and then you have the little hook all the way behind here, okay? This is our first slip sinker setup. I'm going to leave this behind here, okay? And now since I explained most of the things to you guys, I'm going to do exactly the same setup but like heavy for like flathead catfishing, okay? So I'm going to get my 30 pounds spider wire invisibrate, get a short amount of line again, not going to say much now since you guys kind of know already how to tie the stuff, all right? Cut the line, I'm going to do a reinforced clinch notch, so there we go. Now, note, when it comes to braided line, one little notch for the reinforced clinch knot is not enough because braid, you see, it's very, you know, the feeling, right, of braided line. So what I usually do, I triple the notch to make the knot bigger for the reinforced clinch knot, okay? After all, the reinforced clinch, this, this knot here is very important. So the line, you know, so it doesn't get undone when you fish, okay? Let's slide the sinker in, just like we did previously. Get another snap swivel. So like, let's go, let's do this. Okay, there we go. Pass it over. Same game. Reinforced clinch knot. With the braided line, it can be a little bit trickier to pass the, the line through the hole. So let me... Let me take it easy here a little bit. Alright, there we go. Perfect. Still a little bit tricky, but I think I can do this. Come on, go to the other side. Alright, gotcha. There we go. With braided line, is it's always a little bit tricky. Pass the knot to the other side. Make sure the knot's very close to the end of the line. Alright. Okay, make sure the knot is very close here. Perfect. All right. Then we have the sinker, snap swivel. Okay. Additional little piece of line here, as I've told you guys before. Cut it off. So there we go. With braided line, you know, it's a little bit more troublesome to cut it. Right. I got this. And now for the hook. Right? When you go flathead catfishing, for example, right? For the hook, let me just show you guys. I like to take, this is just my own version, okay? I like to take these blue fish hooks. So I'll take one out for you guys to see. Okay. Let me take one out here. All right, there we go. I don't like this hook for blue fish. I do like the what they call the nyla wire that comes with it, okay? The coated wire. So what I do, I remove this from this hook. Takes a little bit of time, okay? Let's see if I can do this in front of the camera. It sometimes it can be tricky to take them off for some reason, okay? Let's see if I can do this ah, real quick here. All right, pass it through. Okay, there we go. Right, take it off here. Right, perfect. So I took it off. This hook here, the wire, you guys can see. Get this hook away. And I like to get a Gamakatsu octopus hook, okay? I have an 8-0 right here. That is actually perfect for uh, flathead catfishing. All right. So there we go. Same game. Now we have to put the wire on, right? So we pass the wire first through the hole, pass it through the hook, 
and that's it pull it up all right perfect we got our nyla wire gamma katsu hook here that is very resistant and will bring you some flathead catfish in so this is our second setup for the day 20, uh, what was the 30 pounds invisi braid spider wire with this lip sinker set up right snap snap swivel and then coated nyla wire see with an AO gamakatsu octopus circle hook all right now that we have both our of our setups ready to go let me talk a little bit about uh, the mistakes that folks usually make when it comes to slip sinker setups all right folks so before i start talking about the pros and the cons of this lip sinker setup uh, or even before i start talking to you guys about the common mistakes that anglers do when it comes to this little uh, setup this rig right it is important for you guys to know what exactly this lip sinker is used for okay so let me talk a little bit about that as you guys may or may not be familiar with, in the, our sport of fishing, there are two very different styles of fishing. One is called the active fishing and the other one is called the passive fishing. The, act, the active fishing is what bass anglers usually do, okay? They usually go out there with one fishing rod, they tie different lures, they walk around and they cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve trying to find the fish that is the active fishing style in our sport of fishing the passive fishing style is when an angler picks a certain spot and then that angler sets up his rods at that spot you cast out your bait and you wait so pretty much the angler picks that spot thinking right or hoping that the fish is either there or the fish will pass by one of these times you know so he will stop by and uh and you know and eat the bait that is what we what we call or refer to as still fishing or passive fishing okay so this lip sinker setup the setup that i'm showing you here right the the weight and everything else this is used for passive fishing okay this is not used for active fishing this much you guys should know already right and when it comes to passive fishing what species of fish are we talking about here right well we are talking about a very very wide variety of fish okay we're talking about the channel catfish family i mean the catfish family which includes the channel catfish brown bowhead yellow bowhead white catfish black catfish flathead catfish okay blue catfish all those catfish we are talking about the biggest member of the minnow family, the carp, right? Common carp. You could catch a common carp using this slip sinker setup here, okay? Small hook, slip sinker setup. Yes, that would definitely catch you carp. That would definitely catch you goldfish, koi, okay? With this is little slip sinker setup, okay? You can also catch different types of perch, white perch, yellow perch, you can catch different types of sunnies okay so different members of the lepomis family in other words a slip sinker setup will help you catch a huge huge variety of fish when it comes to still fishing okay leaving your bait out there all the way down most of the times all the way down on the bottom right and just waiting for the fish to hitch all right, now that you guys are familiar with this, let's go a little bit through uh, the physics behind the slip sinker setup and the most common mistakes that anglers do when it comes to the setup. All right, fellas. So what exactly makes the slip sinker so unique compared to other rigs, okay? What makes it so unique is the fact that your sinker here, okay, is free to slide on your line okay hence the name is lip sinker setup I mentioned this previously right now why is this so important okay it is important because of a physical component called tension okay 
just keep that in your head for now tension okay so let's say that you were fishing and you were using this lip sinker setup okay let's say that we are under the water now and you have just cast your lip sinker setup all the way down okay so as you cast your line this lip sinker setup starts falling okay of course it falls really fast in the water right so your lip sinker setup all the way down in the water is going to stay somewhat like this okay let me show you the hook here just you know so you guys know about it but this is how pretty much is going to stay okay now this is the interesting part okay forget about the hook for now let's just look at the sinker and the snap swivel once you cast once you cast your line out this is how it's going to stay right but don't forget your line is attached to your rod so this is how your line is going to stay okay we are all the way down in the water now this is one mistake that anglers make a lot when using a slip sinker setup okay and what mistake is that once they cast their stuff all the way down in the water okay they their they leave is lack line in their lines okay and what exactly happens when you leave is lack line in your line this line behind here you see it was very straight right it is very straight right now if you leave is lack line on your rod this is how your line your line is going to become okay under the water okay you see it's not going to be straight anymore okay there's gonna be slack line over here and why is this important we will get to that really soon okay just keep this in mind so one of the biggest mistakes that anglers do when using this lip sinker setup okay is that they, they leave a slack line in their rods please folks when you use a lip sinker setup never never leave a slack line on your line okay after you cast all your stuff all the way down okay and you see and you feel that your sinker is already all the way down make sure to reel in the slack line so that down the water this is how you want your rig to look like okay with a straight line right here why because we physicists tend to say that when the line is straight like this okay your tension in the line the tension force in the line is maximized your tension is at the highest okay when your line is like this and you have a slack line you have no tension in the line whatsoever okay which comes to my next point right now all right so i just explained to you guys that one of the biggest mistakes is not to have a slack line on a slip sinker setup and now i'm going to explain to you why okay and that's because let's take a look at the hook now okay that's because one of the purposes of having a slip sinker set up okay is that when the fish bites your hook right let's say this is the hook this is your setup under the water the fish came and just hit your hook all right the fish is going to start moving he's going to start dragging your stuff okay and i don't know if you guys can see from here or now what is going on okay but the swivel is moving towards me the sinker is not moving okay the line is moving and this is exactly how a slip sinker setup is supposed to work okay so from a side view okay same thing hook is attached to the side right let's say the fish got the hook what happens at that point okay the fish starts pulling the sinker moves just a little bit the line moves a lot this is how you want your slip sinker setup to be okay now let's say that the fish got your hook and you don't have tension on your line meaning you have a slack line okay looking from outside the water on your rod your line is all messed up is not straight if the fish gets your hook right now okay look what's gonna happen there's no tension in the line see my god you see that until your line gets straight here there is a small amount of time that you won't be able to detect the bite at all this amount of time okay which is very different if you had no slack line at the beginning whatsoever and the fish actually pulls your hook you see what's happening right here folks right the line goes goes a little bit a little bit and this line that goes this way when you have no slack line right that's when your rod the tip of your rod it starts bending like 
this, okay? So you get my idea? If you have a slack line and the fish gets your bait, there's a little amount of time that is gonna take until the line gets straight. That amount of time, your rod will not go like this, okay? So you won't be able to detect the bite until your line is straight, tensions maximized, and then your rod starts going like this, okay? That's already a, a long time. If you don't leave a slack line and the fish pulls, all right, your rod is already going like this. And this is when you know that you have a bite. And this is one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to this lip sinker setup, because why? The amount of time, if you have a slack line and the fish is pulling, that amount of time, the fish may have realized already that you have a freaking hook on your bait, you know? And that amount of time that your rod didn't go like this, that you didn't even detect the bite, the big fish may have already, you know, given up or he kind of realized there's a hook and he's gone. So you have lost your fish. Another thing, I'm using an octopus hook, okay, which gives you a, what is called an automatic hook set, okay? Let's say I am not using an octopus hook, okay? Let's say that I'm using my smaller setup now with just a J hook, okay? If you have a slack line on a J hook and you let the fish just take the bait like this, right? Until your line gets straight, meaning your tension gets maximized, the fish is not going to have an auto hook set. You know, you need to do the hook set. So that time that your line is slack and you cannot detect the bite, you will lose a lot of fish that way, okay? You will lose a lot of fish not having a proper hook set. You will lose a lot of fish that will come, hit your bait and realize there is a hook here, you know? Because don't forget, from the outside of the water, what is your way of detecting the bite is when your rod moves, right? That is usually the traditional way of detecting the bite. And that's why, again, folks, for a slip sinker setup, you always want to maximize your tension. And what it means to maximize your tension? It means leaving no slack line on your rod, okay? After your setup is all the way down in the water. This is mistake number one that anglers do a lot. Mistake number two that anglers do a lot, okay, is to cast their rods out and just leave the, 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 the setup like that without moving. I will give a very simple example, all right? So let's say I'm an angler, I'm using this lip sinker setup, we are down under the water right now, and I just cast my stuff out, okay? I cast my stuff out, and boom, the thing comes down, and it falls in the water. Now here, we are not under the water, right? So you guys, th this can't get too messed up, okay? But what I'm trying to tell you is that when you cast your stuff under the water, you are not going to get a straight setup like this, beautifully lying down the water. No, you're gonna get something that is all maybe this way, okay? I'll give it closer to you guys. Or maybe you're gonna get something that is this way, Okay, you're gonna get something that looks very messed up, okay? And when using a sleep sinker setup, your best possible scenario is you want it. You want things to be actually this way. And why do you want things to be actually this way? It has to do with tension as well, right? Once you have your tension maximized on this side, and your setup looks as neat as possible in the water once the fish gets the hook, right? You see, there's only a little bit of time to maximize retention, right? If your setup comes in the water all messed up like this, like this, you know, and the fish comes here and gets the hook, he has a little extra time, you see, until your tension is maximized, okay? So again, what you want to happen when you use a slip sinker setup, you want to cast out there and let it be like this down there, okay? But of course, just like I mentioned previously, if you just cast and leave your stuff there, it's never gonna be that way. So what exactly do you do? There are two solutions to this problem, okay? There are two solutions to this mistake. The first solution is, if you are fishing somewhere without vegetation, on the bottom of the lake, pond, creek, river, meaning 
for example, you're fishing a sandy flat, or you're fishing a rocky area, I don't know, somewhere that, that green stuff is not going to get on your setup, okay? What you can do is you cast your stuff out there, sinks like this, just twitch your rod one time. When you twitch your rod one time, your sinker is going to move your direction, right? You, you are this way, you are casting your stuff this way, right? So, see? It lands like this, twitch your rod, just twitch your rod one time, you know, you're gonna drag your sinker down there and then your setup's gonna be as straight as possible, okay? This is one solution. The second solution is if you are going, if you are fishing somewhere with a lot of vegetation, meaning you know that down there is full of green stuff and your stuff is gonna get attached to that green stuff as soon as you move it, on the process of when things are falling in the water, right? And let's say it's falling this way. Twitch your rod right here before it falls all the way down. So the sinker goes that way and then it falls like this. Right? This is the solution to the problem. And believe me, you want your setup under the water to be as neat as possible so your chances of losing fish are minimum. If your setup is something like this, Okay, I'm not saying that you're gonna miss all the fish that you catch, but I'm saying that there is a good percentage that you're gonna miss some fish. And sometimes your stuff can get can even get tangled in your line. What if your stuff falls like this, you know, and your hook is pretty much tangled in your line, right? You're never gonna catch fish like that. So you want to make sure, or as sure as possible, that your setup is as niche as possible, okay? This is mistake number two. Mistake number three that I've actually just mentioned during the mistake number two is when you are fishing a pond or somewhere full of vegetation all the way down, okay? This happens a lot when, for example, people are carping uh, with the small hooks, small sinkers, right? Or when people are just catfishing. Once you cast your stuff down there, and let's say that you are not doing mistake number two, so you cast your line this way, you are, you are that way, you cast your line this way, your line falls in the water, right, all messed up, you give it a twitch on the rod so it goes as neat as possible, fell down, okay? Once it is all the way down, and this is mistake number three, never, never move your sinker again. Maximize your tension over here, Okay, but make sure you do not move the sinker. This is something that I cannot explain on this video. The feeling of the sinker, the feeling of the f of the sinker falling, you know, that force you will have to get it by yourself, by experience, right? But make sure to not move your sinker. Why? Because if you do move your sinker even a little bit, and this place is full of vegetation, your hook over here, brother, we'll get a big chunk of green stuff on it, okay? So I moved it one time, boom! Big chunk, big chunk of green stuff here, the fish may not be able to see the bite, the, the bait, the fish may not be able to even get the bait, because now you don't have just your corn here for the carp, or your chicken liver for the catfish. You have a huge lump of <laughs> kale on your hook, okay? So this is mistake number three. If you're fishing somewhere with a lot of vegetation, if you're fishing somewhere with a lot of snags, it's the same theory, okay? As soon as the stuff falls down in the water, right before it falls, don't forget mistake number two, twitch your rod real fast so it gets as neat as possible. Once it falls down there, maximize your tension. Don't leave slack, don't leave slack line, right? But don't forget, never, never move your sinker again because if you do, let's look at this side of the story, you will get snagged if you are fishing somewhere snaggy. You will get a big lump of vegetation on it and fish will not be able to see your bait anymore, okay? So these are mistakes that anglers make a lot, a lot when it comes to the slip sinker setup, okay? So summarizing, never leave a slack line. Always maximize your tension. Why? Because when the fish bites, right, you want to see your rod tip like this. Okay, and that only happens when you have your tension maximized, when your line is straight and you have no slack line. Second thing, when you cast your setup down, right? Cast your setup down. If you're fishing somewhere without vegetation, try to make it as neat as possible. Give your rod a little twitch so your sinker comes 
ahead and you have a niche set up or as neat as you can down there. If you are fishing somewhere full of vegetation, in the process of falling, give your rod a twitch and then you will have your setup as neat as possible down there. You do not want your setup to be something like this, something like this, something like this, all messed up, okay? And third part, if you are fishing somewhere rocky or somewhere full of vegetation, again, once your sinker falls all the way down, do not move it. Because if you move your sinker, this swivel is gonna move. If this swivel move, the, the hook is going to move, and this hook here is going to get hooked on some rocks and get snagged, it's going to get hooked on some vegetation and get snagged. These are the three mistakes that anglers always make when it comes to the slip sinker setup, okay? Lots of folks tell me, oh Leo, I use the slip sinker setup and I lose a lot of fish on it. Well, Sherlock, if you don't maximize the tension on your line, okay, your hook set ratio are going to be, is going to be extremely bad unless you use circle hooks. That's number one, okay? If you're fishing somewhere with lots of vegetation and you drag your sinker all the way down, you got a lump of vegetation here now. You can stay there for three hours waiting for your carp. The carp's going to eat all the chum around, not see the corn that is here. You're never going to catch fish, okay? So, as you guys may have noticed, when you use this lip sinker setup, okay, you have to be very pictorial about your situation. You have to always think, what the heck is going on down there? What is going on underwater? How is my setup sitting down there? Is it sitting like this? Is it sitting like this? You know, you, always to, you have to always think about these kind of things, okay, folks? All right, now that I've talked a little bit about the mistakes, let's see what else is there to talk about this lip sinker setup. Okay, so now that we have talked about the most common mistakes using a slip sinker setup, it is easier for me to talk to you guys about the pros and the cons of using a slip sinker setup, okay? So when it comes to the pros of using a slip sinker setup, as I've mentioned previously in this video, one of the biggest pros is that you have aha, a sinker that flows very smoothly on your line, okay? This is unique to the setup, okay? Most other setups, the sinker is attached directly to the line and when your sinker moves, everything else moves with it. Or better saying, when everything else moves, your sinker moves with it. In the slip sinker setup, one of the biggest pros is that when everything else moves, the sinker most of the times stay put, especially if you use a bigger sinker here. Here I'm using one ounce, right? If I put a three ounces here, okay, and I move the rest, you can check if this thing is going to move or not. It is not going to move. And that is the goal of this rig. This is the pro of this rig, okay? It's to ensure that when everything else moves, okay, the sinker stays put. If your sinker does not stay put for whatever reason, the whole thing about this leap sinker setup falls apart, okay? For example, let's say that you were fishing a river, okay? Once again, you are casting this way, so you are that way, you are casting this way, okay? You cast all your stuff down. Whoa, all right, went down. You did not make those mistakes that I mentioned. You have twitched your rod a little bit and make it as neat as possible. But let's say that this river that you have cast into, okay, has a current, okay? And let's say the current is flowing towards the camera. If your sinker is too small and the current is too high, your slip sinker setup is going to be rolling like this towards the camera. And that is not good. Why is that not good? Because see, as you roll towards the camera, alright? I'm rolling towards the camera. Your hook is rolling with it, okay? And you know what that means? If you're fishing somewhere rocky or somewhere with a lot of snags and you don't have sufficient weight to keep your stuff down, your hook is going to roll into a snag, okay? So you have to adapt to the situation. If the current is too high, take your sinker off, right? Let's say I put a one ounce pyramid sinker on, okay? It's a steel slip sinker set up with a one ounce py pyramid. And does the shape matter? Absolutely! Look how smooth this egg sinker rolls, okay? 
Can I do the same with the pyramid? No. So, of course, the, you know, of course the shape matters, okay? If I say that there's current, I put a one ounce egg sinker, and the egg sinker was just rolling, rolling a little bit, change it. Change to a pyramid sinker. You see, there's more surface tension. This, is all, this has all to do with physics. Chances are it's not going to move as much. It's still going to flow smoothly on the line, okay? And your stuff is going to stay put. Now, let's say that the current is still too high, okay? So, it doesn't matter if it's a bullet, egg sinker, or if it's a pyramid. Is it still dragging your stuff around? Your hook is getting dragged as well. You are getting snagged. Change it. Two ounce river sinker. So, I've upgraded now. Instead of one ounce, I went up to two ounces, okay? Does it still is lip sync? Yeah, see? It's smooth. Very smooth. More surface area, okay? This is a physics terminology. It means it holds ground better. More surface area holds ground better. Your stuff very likely is not going to move. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is when you use this lip sinker, you gotta adapt to different situations, okay? For that, always bring a repertoire, a repertoire of sinkers, okay? Certain sinkers are good, certain sinkers are bad, it depends on the situation, okay? For another example, sometimes you want your setup to roll around, okay? For example, I fished on the Skugel River for a long time in my life. I know that that place is full of sandy flats, okay? And when I punch my stuff on a sandy flat, I actually like my sinker to roll a little bit before it stays put. Why? Because when my sinker rolls, everything else rolls, right? And in on the Skugel River, I would be using actually this setup with a much smaller hook. And while my hook is also flowing together with the sinker, fish may be around. And they see that thing rolling all the way down, they will bite it. For example, the white perch. So depending on the situation, if your area is not snaggy, you know, like the Skugel River is not snaggy where I fish at, let it roll. Let it roll for a little bit until it stays put. Because in that little process, you can get a bite real quick. Okay? If you're fishing somewhere very snaggy, Make sure to use a sinker with a lot of surface area, okay? Lots, lots of surface area and heavy too. So it can withstand the current, okay? Withstanding the current, the thing does not roll, so your hook has less chances of getting somewhere inside the snag, okay? So these are the basics of this lip sinker set up, folks. These are the basics of it, okay? We went through the pros and the cons, we went through the mistakes. This is how you use the sleep sinker setup. As I've recommended at the beginning of this video, watch the other videos, the ones where I'm actually using the sleep sinker setup and landing fish on it. I'm gonna give a couple few final words about this rig, one or two good things about it, and we're gonna get this video done. Thing that is Another thing that is really good about this lip sinker setup is that you can use it vertically, okay? So let's say you are fishing from a bridge or a platform, okay? And you let your line down. This is how your line is going to go down. If you reel it up, this is how your line is going to reel it up, right? This is a very good pro when it comes to this lip sinker setup because when you are fishing from a bridge or a platform, to avoid snags, you can reel your sinker up just to a point, see, just to a point where your hook is going to be suspending just a couple inches, okay, like one inch down the bottom, okay, so this is one pro of this lip sinker setup, your line is just going to be like this if there is no current in the place, okay, and that is good, why that is good, because there are no chances or possibilities of you getting snagged, even if an American eel bites, okay, American eel comes, gets your hook and tries to drag it inside a little hole, right, you can set the hook up right away and the hook is going to go up like this, right. So this is lip sinker setup if you fish it from bridges, platforms, piers, anywhere where you can vertically do it. It's a very, very good weapon for fishing, okay. Now, what is the mistake that anglers usually do, even fish vertically? There you go. Even when it's vertical, they leave all the, all the sinker all the way down. 
this extra line right here that you have on this side that you can see with the hook brother if you leave your sinker all the way down when you're fishing vertically the fish will have plenty of line see plenty of line around here to drag it under a rock if especially if it's an American eel and just get you snagged so don't forget if you're fishing the slip sinker set up vertically do not do that mistake okay reel your sinker up a couple inches just so you know you have a feel that your hook is just one or two inches down the bottom so you actually does you actually don't get snagged okay this is another pro when it comes to the slip sinker setup and finally one last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the slip sinker setup and this is something very important too with fish to enjoy the fight that the fish gives okay and the slip sinker setup is one of the setups one of the rigs that is going to give you a very very enjoyable fight when you catch a big fish and why is that again ah laws of physics okay that's because when everything else moves the sinker stays the sinker is not attached to the line if you use rigs where the sinker is attached to the line and you have hooked up a fish and you're fighting the fish you are fighting the fish and also fighting your own sinker okay now that may sound extremely ignorant right you may tell me oh the sinker is only two three ounces it doesn't make a big difference well next time you go out try it try fighting a fish with a sinker attached to the line three ounces with another rig and try fighting a fish with three ounces on one slip sinker setup and believe me folks you will come to the conclusion that when you have a slip sinker set up your fight with the fish is going to be so much more enjoyable because the slip sinker is freely swinging on the line you know you will come to the conclusion this I cannot explain in the video you will have to go out there and learn from experience okay <laughs> so there you go uh, this concludes my video for today how to tie a slip sinker rig and how to use it properly in this video I have shown you guys what are the necessary components to tie a slip sinker setup I've shown you guys how to properly tie a slip sinker setup I've talked to you guys about the most common mistakes when it comes to the slip sinker setup what anglers usually do that they're not supposed to I've talked about the nature of this rig this is a rig used for passive fishing meaning it's still fishing and I've talked a little bit about the pros of this rig what types of situations should this rig be used how it should be used hopefully by now you guys are very very much more pro efficient with this lip sinker setup and finally don't forget to watch the videos in the info button above alright folks those are the applications of what I've just spoken here okay if this is the theory and the physics behind the slip sinker setup those videos are pretty much the experiment the experiment okay so you go out there with the slip sinker setup and you see for yourself if this works for you or not alright so don't forget to watch those videos they are very important as you see me uh, casting out there as you see me doing the rigs as you see me you know landing the fish this rig is really really good is one of the most traditional ones and I, I tell folks if you are a passive angler if you fish for catfish if you fish for carp this is one rig that you should master and uh, as funny as it may sound people come to me and they think that they got everything written down you know but they make mistakes like that you know they cast it out there leave slack line they cast it out there and they don't even know but their setup is like this under the water you know why just because they did not twitch their rod one time to make it a little bit more niche you know they get snagged why they get snagged because their stuff starts rolling because the current is too fast and the hook gets snagged on a rock so yes there you go folks hopefully after watching this you're a little bit more pro efficient with this rig okay all right, I'm done for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I know it took a lot of time, but like I said, learning has no shortcuts, okay? If you have any additional ideas for a future how-to video, 
whatever you want or feel like learning leave it on the comment section below i will read all the comments and next week i am going to bring you another how to video all right thank you very much for watching and following the channel i will see you next time on the next video tie lines